Hello everybody, how's it going? This is Rich Kennedy, um, coming at you again. Um, how you doing Mr. Welberg, Brother Welberg? Um, so as I said, I'd start out talking about the NGOs. I've done this video like two times already and the first one was horrible quality, uh, picture, bad sound. The other one was even more worse picture and no sound. So this is a uh, try number three. And uh, the one that has some sound on me end up putting out later or afterwards as like an outtake just in case there's any of the things I said there that I might miss here. Um, but we were going to talk about the NGOs. <laughs> And the main issue with them, with the uh, Watch Our Bible Tract Society being a member of the NGO system, signing up to be a member of the NGO system. Um, so, obviously, I mean, um, I remember when I first seen this, it was like one of the first things that got me when I uh, came out, or, or uh, um, uh, when I was still in, when I first uh, started looking at the critical, what people, what the critics were saying about the religion. And here's the thing about that. Let's say you're going to go buy a car. You go to salesman. And let's say you've had this car for a while, this particular brand, uh, you know, make for a model or uh, uh, brand car. Let's say it's Ford, you know, you go to a Ford dealership and start, you know, you go to the salesman and you're like, hey, you know, I'm, looking, I'm you know, look for a car or whatever, but uh, start showing her cars or showing you cars. And then you ask, well, well, is there any bad, is there anything bad with this car? Is there any problems with this car? And the guy's goes, no, 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 the no, car's perfect. Well, do you mind if I, give me, give me a chance. I want to look on the internet, you know, see, just check, you know, see if there's anything wrong with this particular car. And, uh, no, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. You know, so you, you get a little chance, you, you, you know, by, when you're, uh, by yourself and, and you look up and you find some, uh, find some things that, you know, some problems, some issues people are having, you know, like, cutting out, you know, when you're going up because, uh, the, well, what's it, what's it called? The, uh, I'm, cause I almost bought one, the V tech engine, the, the six V tech engine or whatever, uh, would stall out at a certain speed if you had it in a certain gear. So I, oh, I, what's, you know, what's, what's all, what's all about this? Oh, that, those are just liars. That's, that's put out by Chevy. That's put out by ex Ford employees that just want to get us. Would you want to buy that car? So when I first started looking at the uh, critical side, what people were saying, you know, see for myself if they were all lies. First thing they hit me with was this NGO thing. One of the first things I think. I think it was the first thing. Uh, I remember I made some, you know, Jehovah Witness like comment to the uh, apostates about how they're just all bitter and, you know, liars and this and that. And it's only hit me with the NGO thing. I was like, wow, these guys are good. They fake this whole NGO document with the United Nations seal on it and everything. Wow. And then. I go and I was like, well, this is easy to, this is, you know, piece of cake. Went to the NGO website, I mean, the United Nations website, looking in the NGOs, and sure enough, I found this letter or the statement by the, the United Nations regarding the membership of the Watchtower in the uh, United, in the United Nations NGO system. I was like, well, it was true. It must be a good reason. Probably, is it most likely they were, you know, trying to gain some sort of leverage or some sort of foothold, make some 
um, I guess, not allies, but use the NGO system to probably benefit countries that are under ban. You know, maybe to try and get to try and, you know, talk to the UN about it. You know, they had to be some sort of member. So, like, okay, we'll, ju we'll just, this is, we'll just do this. That's my first thought. It must have been for that. So when I looked at the um, response the Watchtower gave, that they did it because they needed to use the library. I was, there's a, you know, so well, maybe you know, the NGOs aren't that bad. Maybe there's got to be something. The Watchtowers, they wouldn't do that just so they could use a library card. They wouldn't, you know, sell out for a library card. Because that's one one guy used to always say. He's like, they just did it for basically what amounts to a library card. What's so bad about that? His name was LP. At least he was on MySpace. Um, but, so I went and looked, figured, you know, what's the purpose of the NGO? Why, why does the NGO exist? Turns out the NGO's sole purpose, the reason the United Nations created the NGO system, was to do what the supposed um, statement that the Watchtower didn't supposedly sign, which was to help advance and promote the goals of the United Nations. So that's the purpose of the NGO system existence. That is why it exists. That is why the United Nations, the beast, mind you, the uh, basically the, the the enemy, the the direct uh, uh, the direct you know enemy of Jehovah's Kingdom. So. Jehovah's arch enemy government that's supposed to, you know, bring about the beginning, you know, the beginning of the Great Tribulation created this system so to support that, to support their agenda against Jehovah. And the United Nations joined it anyway. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter if they signed anything or not. It, and it's really, I'm not going to get into the requirements it took to be an NGO under the DPI. Um, but they didn't have to sign anything. They didn't have to, they didn't even have to sign an agreement to support, you know, even though I find it hard to believe there wasn't a signature somewhere in which the United, which brothers, Barber, Barry, or Bar, well, I don't know which one of them, and some other guy signed. They had to sign something, a physical signature. But even if, in some crazy world, they didn't actually have physical signatures signing away, they still had. They still wrote somewhere on an application the name Watchtower Bible Track Society in their names. That's as good as signing up. But they didn't even need to do that. By simply being a member by simply being a member on the books they made a public declaration of support for the United Nations by simply being a member none of that other stuff all those paperwork and all you know doesn't that's it just that's the reason they exist therefore by being a member being a part of it you were supporting it and anybody who is in that who works in that area, you know, whether it's politics or uh, non-profits, uh, religious, whatever. Anybody who's working in that arena of the NGOs, once they see, or anybody who, who knows anything about that, once they see the Watchtower Bible Tract Society name amongst everybody else on there, on the, uh, you know, list of members, they would automatically assume Watchtower Bible Tracks Society supported the NGOs because 
That's the purpose the NGOs exist. End of story. I mean, that's I mean, that's it. They're wrong. Straight up, there's there's no getting around it. I remember hearing, I think my dad told me, maybe it's been someone else, but that if a baptized brother or sister joins the military, signs their name and signs up for the military, signs that contract, by simply doing that, they get automatically disassociated, not just fellowships, they get disassociated. No meeting, letter, or anything needed. Because by simply signing up, they made a, they basically sign off on the Watchtower Bible Track Society. They were now a part of this. And if you could be a part of this, or if you're a part of the military, you can't be a part of the Watchtower Bible Track Society, so they automatically disassociate you. I don't know if that's a policy now, but it was at one time. <coughs> so. The governing body. Brother Franz. Again. Messing up. Because it was under his watch. That it started. They. What was I gonna say? Hold up. The governing body basically disassociated the Watchtower Bible Tract Society from Jehovah by joining the NGOs. Because if you can, if a, if a if a brother can disassociate himself by simply joining the military, a organization in opposition to God because. They're part of the world governments that are going to be against God. They are the military of the world governments. Then the governing body, Fred Franz, Milton Henschel, Sidlick, Genghis, all them old guys, old school guys, the guys I grew up with. All them guys, they disassociated the Watchtower Bible Track Society. And then has, have not yet taken responsibility or explained it yet. Brush it aside. It's one of their dirty little secrets they don't want you to know. That's why they don't want you talking to or reading apostate stuff or looking into the critical side just like that set, the salesman. Doesn't want you going looking at the critical, you know, reviews of a particular car that you're trying to buy. Because he wants to make that sale. He wants you to, you know, do what he wants you to do. And if you happen to find out something that he may know that's wrong with the car, then he may lose that sale. He doesn't want to do that. So he tells you, he tries to keep you away from that information. I mean, so, end of story. And here's the other thing. When I, was, when I first heard that, when I first learned it, I got angry. I was pissed. I was, I was you know, but it, it, and it, but not because I felt lied to, not because I felt duped. The first thing that came to my mind when I found that out and when I read that, you know, I learned that what it was what it really meant was the brothers in Malawi. The first thing, Malawi, blam in my head. What them brothers went through. Being killed, beaten, raped, babies thrown over bridges, losing their jobs losing their possessions, sent to jail. All these things those brothers endured to not buy that one, like, 25-cent political party card of a one-party, you know. So if, like in here, if 
it was just one party, like the Republicans, and you can only buy one card for one party. So they didn't allow the brothers to do that. But they signed up to the United Nations so they could use the library. Second thing about that <clears throat> is what was the what was the importance of needing to use the library? Was it essential? Did the Watchtower could the Watchtower have not uh, been providing the you know the correct um, spiritual food? Could they have not proclaimed Jehovah's Kingdom if they didn't have access to that library? Would the work would have stopped? So it was a convenience. For convenience. So that they didn't have to, I don't know, maybe set some people up in D.C. and have them just, you know, researching in the uh, Library of Congress. I'm sure a lot of that stuff, if they couldn't get in the libraries in New York, the biggest city in the world, and in, in any of the big colleges in New York, in the, in the U.N. satellite libraries, they couldn't, if they couldn't, the information they couldn't get in there, they may have gotten the Library of Congress, and maybe at worst, they wouldn't, there was some information, some stats, some pictures, some whatever, that they couldn't get access to. But they still would have been able to, you know, spice up their articles. That's all it was, it was just fluff. Would have any of that information really changed the message? No, I'm just trying to get, just trying to find stuff, you know, support, you know, try to find people to misquote, try to find some stats that fit their, you know, picture or their, you know, what they're trying to sell. Get some of them, you know, horrible pictures from, you know, because I remember, I always remember it was odd when I'd seen a watchtower. A picture and then it said and it had the you know the credits of the picture UN uh, so I was like why, why are we using UN pictures this is like back in the 90s now I'd be like what, what's this UN why are they use that just doesn't seem right why are we going to them for pictures I didn't find out about the UN until 2006 five years after they pulled out why didn't they make a public why didn't they address the congregation you know in a watchtower or how at least in a kingdom ministry explaining the situation and then publicly asking forgiveness from from Jehovah for doing it You know, you know, the, the thing they're supposed to be humble, you know, like the, the humility. But no, their pride, their lack of humility, and their haughtiness, they try to justify it. And then some opposers are saying, put that in, some opposers are saying, how about people that see it for what it is? You know, there's something wrong. Why can't you say anything about it? Why can't you demand? Why can't a letter campaign be be started demanding the uh, governing body explain themselves on it? That's not going against. That, that's not causing divisions. If a congregation, if it comes, you know, congregation starts saying, you know, elders in the circuits. Hey, do you see this? Check this out. Yeah, check this out. Yeah, we're gonna have to get this get this explained. Whether it's whether or not it's right, we all need to get this explained. And they unify, uni, you know, in a unified matter, bring it up to the governing body. What's this all about? Explain yourselves.
I mean, how many circuit meetings do they have where all the elders get together every year? Can't be brought up. You know, pass a resolution. Let's talk to the circuit overseer. Have him talk to the other circuit overseers. Have them pass a resolution. Have them talk to the district overseers. So that then all the congregation can unitedly do it. Get the answers they needed. You can do that in a unified manner without dividing the congregation. But no, they needed to keep their power. They're not gonna. They're not gonna expose themselves as being wrong because they're weak. You think any of them governing body members want to lose that position? What would they do if they weren't the governing body members and they were no longer in Bethel? Think they want to go to that life? This is where, if you see my shirt, you got to start questioning and use that. They don't want you to freely use that as it was intended to be used. So tell you don't, don't get the dangers of independent thinking. Don't think independently of the society. It's dangerous for the society. So that's that's the problem. They broke Christian neutrality for convenience and are unrepentant about it. Just because they took their names off the list. Just because they took their names off the list doesn't mean they're free. Doesn't mean they're not guilty. They're not still guilty. And even though those brothers are dead, just about all of them, I believe, except for maybe Loesch. Maybe her too. No, her, yeah, her, her. And Let, I think. So even some of them brothers are still there. And the, and, the, and the people that can't, you know, the new ones. They're complicit because they haven't taken the steps to fix the matter themselves either. So that's it. it was all for that subject. I mean, pretty straightforward. Uh, I think the next thing I'm going to talk about is 1975. That is actually another video that's actually I was able to finish, so um, definitely look forward to my video on blood and my video on the child abuse situation and my video on disfellowshipping because those are going to be the three ones I want if anything, if any of these videos were to go viral or in within the JW community where people like, you know, passing them around, it'd be those three videos. I mean, this one obviously is uh, good, but those ones are the main because those ones actually affect people's uh, actual health. It, they're, it actually harms people. The United Nations thing is just a belief system anyway. You know, they're hypocrites, but it's just the belief system. The blood, child abuse, and disfellowshipping actually harm people. And that's why those three videos, when I... When you when you see them, watch them, and make the if you can any of the any of you uh, YouTube XJW influencers influencers people with a lot of view, a lot of viewers talk about it. Watch it. I mean, first watch it obviously, and see if it's worth letting other people know about it. Because I bring up things that I haven't really seen other people bringing up, and I think they're pretty important. Kind of like this United Nations uh, deal, which I haven't really seen too many people talking about it or or presenting it in such a way. So. Um, and Brother Darrow, hope you continue watching and, uh, go through all the, this whole series because, you know, at least to get a different point of view and realize that people that leave the Washington Bible Track Society don't leave because 
they just want to go and live a life of sin or they're angry and bitter because some brother did them wrong. You know, because I had basically a great relationship with most brothers in the society and I wasn't out sinning. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Now, granted, there was a time where whatever you would want to consider sowing my wild oats, which was pretty pathetic at that. But, you know, I had some fun out there for a little bit, you know, testing the waters. But that's not what I did. For, that's not what I left to do. I didn't want to go do that to leave. I remember, well, I'm just actually getting into my uh, history, so I'm just going to, I remember this right before I was, um, Right before I was, I was about to leave, brother called me in the back room, said, you know, because I, I guess my wife at the time had talked to him. Said, he, I had, you know, I heard you, you know, we're having, you know, having some questions or doubts and this and that. So I take him, I go over and I pull out a encyclopedia, open up to Babylon, go into the whole 585. I'm like, what's this about? What do you mean? Oh, so I was like, this is, this is, you know, saying it happened 30 years later, which made 1914 wrong. Oh, you're not going to believe that. That's the, that's, that's Satan's world. You know, this is, a, this is one of the more intelligent brothers too. This was the brother that, you know, the, the, they're, they're almost, they're, they're, they're high, the, you know, the, they're at the, uh, higher end of the social spectrum of the JW, the pretty big family in Columbus, Ohio. And he's a smart brother. He said, that's Satan's information. Why would you believe that? I was like, well, the problem isn't the information. The problem is, why haven't I heard it? You know, why haven't the Watchtower Bible Stocks I explained this particular... Why did I have to hear it from the apostates? That was my problem. With it. Not that it was wrong. Why did I have to hear it from there? Why couldn't the... Watchtower Bible Track Set Society actually, because as much as we went over that date and how much as much as we talked about it and was in Watchtowers and books and, you know, as much as we focused on that date, nothing said about it. Then I get called back. They wanted to talk to me again, you know. And the one brother, he's like, we heard you had some questions about this 19th and we found... We found a statement by the Watchtower about what it was. I was like, "Hey, I seen that one little paragraph in a King of the Ministry from the seven, from like the early '80s." Like, I'm gonna come across that, you know. I mean, it should have been a post, a, a footnote every time they talked about it. Just like they try to, you know, they, 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 they'll answer the critics when it comes to, like, how they think about the, how the Bible came and how people say the Bible was in, uh, was written after the fact. And, you know, and they have an answer to those critics. Answering the critics, I remember, I think, was a uh, subtitle in the Daniel book or something. One of those Bible, when they were explaining Daniel prophecy, how we knew it was true. Or, more, or maybe the uh the Bible, God's Word, and Man book. I remember, I think that I remember that, that being one of the subheads, answering the crit critics or something like that. So they answered critics for that. But they couldn't answer critics for that for 19, for 585. So it's just questions. You got to ask them. And if you can't get answers, then there's something wrong. Something they're trying to hide. So again, this brother uh, Darrow and uh, everybody else, stay tuned for the next video.